So before we go identify our tree, I wanted to show you one everybody should know. This is poison ivy. And if you take a close look at poison ivy and you find the bud, you'll find that poison ivy is alternately arranged. It's a compound leaf with three leaflets and deciduous. This is poison ivy. We walked up to a tree that we don't know and we're taking a a good book with us and the book is just on trees and we know that we have a tree because it's at least 13 feet in height and three inches in diameter so we're, we're starting off on the right foot in looking at this tree we know that it is a hardwood and not a softwood we know that it is alternately arranged we know that it has a simple leaf and that it is deciduous using a good book we're going to start in the beginning and if that means reading how to use this book or the introduction, we're going to do that. So I've already done that, and I know where to get started. And that's right on the first page. As you can see, this book is broken up into six main sections. Section 1 is trees with needle-like or scale-like leaves. On the same page is section 6, which is palms, cacti, or yuccas. In section two, we have trees with opposite compound leaves. We know that's not our tree. Section three is trees with opposite simple leaves. Why we have simple leaves, ours is alternate, not opposite. Section four is trees with alternate compound leaves. We have a simple leaf, although we do have alternate. And then section five is trees with alternate simple leaves. That is our tree. We're, now we're in the, in the ballpark. So we go to section 5, which would either be plates 23 through 46 or page 113. Moving on to page 113, we have a dichotomous key. These are the major subdivisions of broadleaf plants with alternate simple leaves. Dichotomous keys are very easy to use. They give you choices, and depending on your choice, send you one direction or another until you narrow it down to the tree that you're looking at. Number one, trees with thorns, trees without thorns. We know that ours does not have thorns. Number two, leaves fan-lobed or fan-veined, leaves feather-lobed or feather-veined. If you don't know what this is, you can either look at the front of the book where it'll give some descriptions under leaf shapes. Here's fan lobed, fan veined, or feather lobed. Or if there's a term that you're not familiar with, you also have the option of going to the glossary. And what we're looking at is a feather veined leaf. The main veins more or less at right uh, angles to the main midrib, pinnate veined. And if you take a look at the tree in front of us, you can see the venation is coming out at more or less right angles from the midrib, which runs along the center of the leaf. So, I know we have leaves feather lobed or feather veined, in this case, feather veined. So we'll move on to number three. End buds clustered, fruits, acorns. Well, that would be the oaks. Since we read the beginning of the book, we know that we have end buds not clustered. So we'll move on to number four. Leaves toothed, leaves not toothed. If you take a look at the leaf of our tree, you can see that along the margin of the leaf, it has teeth. Number four, leaves toothed. I'm saying yes, so we go to plates 32 through 43. Starting on plate 32, we're going to take a quick look at the pictures and know that we're pretty much not in the ballpark with plate 32, but we're going to read it. what it says, trees alternate coarse edge leaves, and it gives a brief description of the trees on this page. Trees with large sharp leaf teeth or deeply waved edge leaves. We know our, ours is not deep um, in terms of the teeth. So we go to the next plate. In this case, it's elms and water elm. Trees mostly with, mostly with double toothed. Well, if I look at the pictures and I see that these are double toothed and I know mine has a single tooth, I can skip plate 33 and go on to plate 34. 
Plate 34 is the birches. Lee's double toothed. I know that mine is single tooth, so I can move on to plate 35. Plate 35. Other trees with mostly double tooth leaves and or small woody cones. Again, I know mine is single tooth and I can look at the pictures and tell that my leaf is not in the ballpark. Plate 36. Cherries and peach. Hey, in looking at this page and looking at the pictures, I'm feeling like I might be in the ballpark here, so I'm going to do a little bit deeper investigation. Plants mostly with single tooth leaves or leaf stalks bearing glands. Tree, tr tree bark with narrow stri cross stripes, broken twigs with characteristic sour odor, and buds true. So, let's take a quick look at the bark. And I can see that my bark is cross striped. So I'm feeling good about that. Also, if I take a closer look at the leaves, even without a magnifying lens, I can still see some of the glands at the base of the leaf. And if I were to crush the twigs, I'd probably notice that, that odor that they're mentioning. So, now I can take a closer look at the, the pictures as well as the species and remarks. And in reading through the species of the remarks, the remarks are particularly important. For example, chokeberry, midrib bear, black cherry, midrib often hairy fringe beneath. So that's a key, key remark. I'm going to start looking at some of the leaves for some of these characteristics. And if you look under this leaf, hey, that looks like a hairy midrib. Pretty important that they they made that remark. It's also present in the picture. So this is a distinguishing characteristic. I can also look at these other characteristics at the top where there's information in terms of plus or minuses. If I have a hard time determining what, what these mean, I can also look down at the note section and it'll give me some information. So I'm feeling really good about black cherry. At this point, I'm going to go to page 171. And I'm going to see that black cherry is at least in my geography. So I feel really good about that. And then I'm going to read a description on black cherry as well as um, comparing the similar species and make sure that that's what I have. So that's how you key out a, uh, a tree. Use the dichotomous key in the book. And most book ha books have dichotomous keys. The thing about a Peterson's field guide is it intentionally leaves out technical botanical terms. And again, this is made to be used from front to back. Hopefully, hopefully this is a useful tool for you and a great way to get you started. Again, those four characteristics. Is it a softwood or is it a hardwood? What's the arrangement? Is it alternate, opposite, or world? Composition, is it simple or compound? And is it evergreen or deciduous? Start remembering trees in this fashion and it'll really help you out. Appreciate you and take care.